Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're gonna take on U substitution for integrals. So if you've never seen this before, it's a wonderful tool for turning a fairly complicated integral into something much nicer. And of course, the key for that is choosing some sort of piece for uh, U, substituting it out, and seeing the new integral we get. But I'm kind of ahead of myself, so let's go ahead and look at the big idea. So as I mentioned, you're starting off with what looks like a fairly complicated looking integral. It may have lots of variables raised to a power. It might even have a lot of functions inside of other functions. But what you're going to do with a situation like this is you're going to comb it over and you're gonna try and find some piece in here, you know, maybe like this piece, that if you take its derivative looks something like another piece. So if I take the derivative of this part that I've highlighted in blue, the two plus x, uh, x to the fourth, I will get something like x cubed, which looks a little bit like this. Now, I say it looks a little bit like uh, x cubed, but because of course if you take this derivative, you'll get a 4x cubed, but that's okay. It, it may not match exactly. Uh, you may end up with constants that don't match up, but we want it to look uh, pretty much like the other piece, at least in terms of the variables and the powers. All right, so what's gonna happen? As soon as we've identified these good pieces, the piece that I've highlighted in blue here, uh, a piece like that, that's what we're going to call the u piece. And so our very first step is we'll run over here and we'll say let u equal two plus x to the fourth. Okay, now allow us to just swap out all of this and just call it a u. Now, we have a lot of other x's in here and they need to be replaced as well. So we're gonna leverage this a little bit more. We're going to see how it can help us get rid of these other pieces. And since they involve a dx, we will take the derivative of u. So I'm using the Leibniz notation here, where I just say I have u, and now I'm taking its derivative, that's the left side. Let's take the derivative of the right side. So the derivative of the constant will go to zero, and the derivative of 4x turns into a 4x cubed. All right, so that looks good. Now with this, you want to go ahead and solve it for the dx. Uh, some people may differ on how they want to do this. Some people like to make the right-hand side of this match other pieces in the integral, but I always find it's a little bit easier for my brain if I just keep working this until the dx is all by itself. So that's what I'm going to do here. All right, so we've achieved it. We have dx all by itself. Now, if you're keeping track of the pieces we're gonna swap out, of course, I'm choosing this U piece. That's all gonna be the, this internal piece of the sign. But we've done all of this work for finding DX. So we're gonna use this as our other piece that we're going to swap out. So for this piece on the end. And if we do things correctly, it actually gets rid of that other piece. That's why we want it to kind of match our derivative. All right, so let's carefully put in the pieces, see how this goes. So this will turn into the integral of x cubed. I haven't done anything with that yet. And then I'll have the sine, and here's where we're swapping it out. We're gonna call that u. All right, let's continue on. And then as I get to the dx, here's what we have for all of that stuff. So it's now being called a du, all divided by a four x cubed. All right, now it's not simpler yet, but it's getting there, it's getting there quickly. I see an x cubed up here, an x cubed in the bottom. Those will go ahead and cancel out. And as for that four that's not really matching up anyway, uh, remember that it is a constant. We can go ahead and move that out in front of the integral. So this will just turn into a one fourth since that four is on the bottom. Sine of u. And now the only thing left over here is a du. So here's where we really take a step back. We start off with a very complicated integral, and now it is much, much simpler. Now we're not done yet. Uh, in all of this substitution process, we haven't actually taken an integral. The only thing we've really done is just written it in a much simpler form. So where we go from here is we actually have to take that antiderivative. Uh, so the antiderivative of sine would come from a negative cosine. So here's where I'm actually taking that antiderivative. I'll say constant, all right? And now that we've uh, been able to take the antiderivative of a much simpler form, then we could go ahead and put back in what we called u in the first place. So I called u this two uh, plus 
uh, x to the fourth, and we'll just go ahead and put that right back in. Two plus x to the fourth plus constant. So we start off with this complicated integral. We uh, used a u substitution, turn it into a much simpler integral, and then we're able to do that antiderivative. Of course, the more times you see this, the more comfortable it uh, gets. So let's try a few more examples and keep going, all right? I'm looking for a piece in here like the 4x squared because if I think about its derivative, it looks an awful lot like an x. Sure enough, it's an 8x, but you know, close enough, it's an awful lot like an x. So we'll run over here and say, all right, let u equal our 4x squared minus one. Next step. Let's go ahead and look at the derivative of u. So here's where I get the 8x, looks nice. Derivative of a constant goes to zero, so that is gone. Now let's go ahead and solve this for dx. I'll start by multiplying both sides by dx, so that'll move over there on the right, and divide over on this side by the 8x. So now I have dx all by itself, okay? So now we need to run into our integral and put in these pieces that we've established. So the four x squared minus one, that's coming from the u. So this will be u to the seventh. I haven't done anything with that, uh, but I do have an expression that I can replace the dx on the end. So here's the du all over eight x. All right, and now we see if we've done things correctly, see if things cancel out like they should. So let's see, those x's are gone. The eight in the bottom is a constant, so we go ahead and move that out front. And here's our much, much simpler integral. Now I'm just dealing with one eighth, the integral of u to the seventh. And of course we take care of that antiderivative just fine by adding one to the power and dividing by the new power. So I end up with one over 64 u to the eighth plus constant. All right, we are not done. Always return back to your original variable for this. Uh, in which case, since we had x's in here, I need to replace that u with a four x squared minus one, and now this is done. All right, again, let's take, a, take another look at a different example and just keep moving through. All right, this next one, we have a fraction. It is definitely a complicated integral, but looking at the bottom, I'm having an x squared, and if I take that guy's derivative, I'll see that it gets, uh, in, or it turns into a six x. So that seems like an excellent choice for you. So we'll call this two plus x plus a three x squared. All right, not too bad. Uh, next step, now we have to take its derivative. So du dx. Let's see, carefully taking this derivative, that's a constant, goes to zero. This will go to one, and this will turn into a six x. Okay, not bad. Let's go ahead and solve for this dx. Let's get it out of the basement. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by the dx. Now I'm not going to distribute here because I'm really uh, worried about getting that dx all by itself and distributing it, it's not gonna help me there, but I can divide both sides by that giant piece, the one plus six x. So that's looking good. Now I'll have the dx all alone, okay? So I have my u, I have my dx, Time to go back to our integral and see what this turns it into. So the top still has that one plus six x for now, but it's all that bottom piece, all of this that we're calling u, so I just have the square root of u. The dx, of course, we will replace with the du divided by one plus six x. And the one plus six x will cancel out the one plus six x. That's what we want. Uh, anytime we get to this much simpler integral, we only want u's at this stage. You can't really move forward if you have u's and x's, uh, but we'll see in one of my examples what to do in certain instances where that happens. All right, so we have a u in the basement. Uh, I could call this u to the negative one half power, that'll work. And now I can go ahead and take care of the antiderivative part. Let's see, add one to the power, this will turn into a positive one half. Divide by that new power is the same as multiplying by two. And now we've done the antiderivative. Of course, we have to return back to our original variable. So let's go ahead and replace that u with the two plus x plus three x squared. A lot of stuff in there. Still to the one half power plus our constant. All right, it's looking nice. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a couple more and just keep trucking. The u substitution works just as good even if you have trigonometric functions in here. 
Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to see like what you should choose, uh, but you know, worst case scenario, you got to choose something. So just go ahead and try it, and if it doesn't work out, uh, run back and, and choose a different you. All right. So here we're going to choose you to be our sine. My motivation for that is the derivative of the sine turns into cosine, so I think sine is going to be a great choice. And this will be sine of theta. So when we take its derivative, we're actually taking the derivative with respect to theta. So derivative of sine turns into cosine. All right, like all the others, let's go ahead and solve for the d theta, get that all alone, multiplying both sides on that. And let's go ahead and divide by that cosine. So cosine of theta equals d theta. Nice. All right, back to our original integral. Let's see what that looks like with our new pieces in here. So this is e to the u, because that's what we're calling that u piece. I have this cosine, and now it's time to replace the d theta on the end. So du all over cosine of theta. And yes, we can see that was an excellent choice. Our cosines are canceling each other out. So I'm only left with the integral of e to the u du. All right, and that's probably one of the nicest integrals you'll come across. This is, of course, equal to just e to the u. And there's our plus constant. Finish this thing off. We'll replace the u with what it was we're going to replace it with the sine of theta. Nice. And now that one is done. All right, one last example, and I promised to show you one where things don't quite go correctly, or at least it doesn't look like they go correctly, but you can still salvage it a little bit. Let's give this one a try. So here, there's no obvious place where I should choose my u. If I choose this for u and look at its derivative, I get x to the fourth, and of course there is no x to the fourth. Uh, if I choose this for u, I get a 3x squared, and there's no x squared. So, you know, there's not a good choice for what to choose for u, but i got to choose something. Uh, in cases like that, it's probably not a bad idea to choose u to be uh, the piece that's inside of another function. So I'm going to choose u to be this x cubed plus 1. All right? And we're just going to run with that and see where it takes us. So du over dx. This is 3x squared. And the derivative of the, of the constant goes to zero, so that's gone. And now we solve this for dx. So du equals 3x squared multiplied by dx. All right, not bad. Now I have to divide both sides by the 3x squared. And now I have something that I can swap out the dx on the end. Okay, so now just uh, like before, I start putting in my pieces to see what we get. So I have my integral of u, that's just fine, that's what we called it. Here's my x to the fifth, and on the end I have a du all divided by a 3x squared. So we've seen that this one third is not a problem, it's a constant, we can move that out front. I'll call the u uh, a one half power, just so I can use that power rule a little bit easier uh, down the road. But now we, we end up with a little bit of a problem with these x's. I have an x to the fifth and an x squared. You know, a couple of x's will cancel, but I'll still be left with x cubed. So they're not completely gone at this point. And like I mentioned earlier, you can't really move forward with the antiderivative until it's all in terms of u. We can't take an antiderivative if I have an x sitting there. But in this particular case, you know, it's going to be okay because x cubed uh, was part of my substitution of what I called u. In fact, if we just work with this equation a little bit, maybe move that one to the other side, I could say u minus one is equal to x cubed. So in this way, we can save this a little bit. I can call that uh, something that involves u. So here's my one third. Here's u to the one half power. And this will be multiplied by a u minus one. Now it's all in terms of u, and now we can actually move forward with this thing. So let's see, uh, wh where do I go from here? Well, if I'm going to do an antiderivative, I'm going to distribute first. So u to the 1 half multiplied by u to the first. So this will be u to the 3 halves, adding those exponents, of course. And u to the 1 half. All right. Now we can apply a power rule uh, just fine. Well, let's go ahead and start back over at the top. So this will be a 1 third. The power rule on this, I would add one to the power, so there's five halves. Divide by that new power is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, that takes care of that. Minus u to the add one to the power is a three halves. Divide by that new power is two thirds plus a constant. 
All right, so that's looking good. I've taken my antiderivative now, uh, and now we just really work on cleaning this thing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute through by that one third, just so I don't have it sitting outside of my brackets there. Let's see, there's a 2 15ths u to the 5 halves minus a 2 ninths u to the 3 halves plus a constant. All right, and almost done in that home stretch now. The last part is we really want to make sure this goes back to our original variable. We want to turn it back into those x's. So I'm just leaving lots of extra space so I can replace where those u's were. And we need to put in the x cubed plus 1. x cubed plus 1. And now this guy is done. This is the antiderivative of our original uh, problem here. All right. So you can see u, su u substitution is not too bad. You just really have to worry about what you should choose for u. And of course, the worst case scenario is that you choose something maybe that doesn't work. That's okay. Just go back and try another piece. The more you do of these, the, the more natural it will feel. All right, if you like this video and you want to see some more, go ahead and check out the other videos I have on mysecretmathtutor.com. Thanks for watching.